Coming up on today's Halloween edition of Trailblazer Weekly, the fall sports season is winding down. We'll let you know which Dixie State teams could be playing into the postseason. We'll also have a chat with volleyball senior libero Sid Brandon. Plus, we visit the annual DSU Athletics Trunk or Treat to find out what our coaches and student athletes think about Halloween. We'll also give you our team costume power rankings. We've got it all on today's spooky show. Trailblazer Weekly starts right now. We are live inside the CEC TV studios on the Community Education Channel, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, and the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page with the Halloween edition of Trailblazer Weekly. I'm Carrick Segmiller, and joining me as always is referee in training, Drayson Ball. Referee in training, Carrick, what's this all about? I, you know what? I, I think I gotta give you a personal foul penalty on that one. That's unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, I, I, I'm the head referee. You're the referee in training, right? Yeah. I thought I thought we had planned this already. I don't. I, I must have missed that in our pre-production meeting because I don't know that I was referee in training. But whatever you say, I guess. Well, very happy Halloween to you too, Drace. And I'm going to go ahead and take that candy across the table back to me. I'll put it by me. <laughs> You've lost the candy. <laughs> no, we're excited to be here on the set of Trailblazer Weekly today. It is a Halloween edition of Trailblazer Weekly, and we're in costume, obviously, uh, referees. And, uh, you know, as we've joked kind of offset, it, it may not be the most popular thing for the student athletes and coaches to see because, you know, maybe they're sick of seeing this, the stripes running around. But uh, uh, all of our, our crew behind the scenes is, is in costume as well, and you're going to get a chance to see them a little bit later in the show, but I can't tell you how excited I am. There's been a lot of planning that's gone into this episode. We've been promoting it on social media. She's trying to let everybody know so that you can tune in and watch this show live and or even on demand later once the show is finished. But Drayson, I'm a big Halloween fan, and I'm excited that we've been able to put this uh, this Halloween edition together. No, 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 I think you've got to give a huge thanks to everyone here at the CEC TV studios. Look at the look at the set. I mean, this is an unbelievable set. Uh, they provided all the decorations, all the cobwebs, everything you see around you, the picture frames, everything. They've provided everything here, and the set just looks absolutely amazing. And I and I, I couldn't be happier with the way it looks. And I'm excited to get this Halloween episode underway. Let's do just that. We'll jump right into our weekend recap, starting with volleyball. After winning four consecutive matches on the road, the Dixie State volleyball team returned to the Student Activity Center for, look at this, we got some trick-or-treaters. <laughs> Trick-or-treat, we got some candy for you. Here we go. Let's get these buckets up here. Look, we've got a football and a pumpkin and some pirates. Happy Halloween. What a special surprise. We got some trick-or-treaters right here on the show. Not going to lie, that caught me off guard. I thought maybe someone was just wandering across the set and, and I just kind of roll with it. Live TV, you roll with it. So let's jump back into our Trailblazer Weekly uh, re Weekend Recap with Volleyball. After winning four consecutive matches on the road, the Trailblazers returned to the Student Activity Center for a crucial two-match set in the sack. We talked about it on the show last week, Drayson, how critical, how crucial this two-game set was going to be for the Trailblazers, just in terms of where they finish in the conference, who they play in that first round of the conference tournament, whether or not they host a, con a conference tournament game, and they get not only one victory, but they get both a uh, decisive victory on Friday, and then that thrilling come from behind 3-2 to win over Regis on Saturday, a spectacular weekend for the volleyball team inside the SAC. And it was an important weekend, like you mentioned, Carrick. I mean, you had the opportunity to potentially tie for first place, which they did. They got uh, a little bit of help from uh, Colorado School of Mines, who uh, lost uh, that weekend as well. So you beat Colorado Christian three, three games to nothing, and then you have that gritty uh, kind of come from behind victory against Regis, a very, very good game, a very hard fought battle. They were able to get the win there. And then obviously, like you mentioned, uh, or obviously, like I mentioned, you know, they got some help uh, in the rest of the conference to move up to tie in first place right now in the standings. And that's important because you go into the last weekend in Carrick, uh, the, the, the Colorado School of Mines holds the tiebreaker over the Trailblazers right now because they did win that matchup uh, on October 7th earlier this month. Um, but it's uh, an interesting uh, last weekend because if you went out and if Colorado School of Mines slipped up again, you have the outright win 
of the RMAC, uh, you know, the RMAC season, mm -hmm. season championship, basically. So two good wins and two important wins going forward, especially going into postseason play here uh, uh, coming up pretty soon. Yeah, one of the words that I've heard Coach Felder use repeatedly over the last couple of years is grit or gritty. Uh, that resilient effort from her team, and we're seeing just that this year. You know, like I said, opening the weekend with a three-nothing sweep of Colorado Christian, and then dropping the first set to Regis, and, and finding it was back and forth. Regis took set one, Dixie State took set two, Regis took set three, uh, and Dixie State took set four, and then won the decisive fifth set. Interestingly enough, everybody that completed a victory of a set in that game was playing on, let's see, the sack runs east to west, the court is east to west, and the sack was playing on the east side of the, of the net. It just was one of those wacky, interesting things. And you saw Dixie State, they won the coin flip, and they said we wanted to start on the west side so that they could end on the east side, and that they were able to have a lead going into that switch in the fifth set, and then they won that fifth set. And as we've talked about throughout the year, too, it's not just offense, but it's defense. 18 blocks in the match against Regis, uh, resulting in Lauren Gamble. She had 11 of those blocks, of total blocks. She's gets, he, she garners her fourth RMAC Defensive Player of the Week award. And I might add that with that award, I mean, I don't want to say she's got it locked up, but I would be shocked if she did not win uh, RMAC Defensive Player of the Year and not just Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they, they need to change the name of that uh, award to the Lauren Gamble Award just because she's uh, won it almost seemingly every week. Obviously, you know, she hasn't won it every week, but it seemed like I, I, every other week on the show we're saying Lauren Gamble has won another uh, Defensive Player of the Week. How about this, Carrick? Leads the, leads the NCAA Division II, leads the entire country, does Lauren Gamble in total blocks at 143 and blocks per set at just over one and a half blocks per set. Uh, by the way, uh, in that match you mentioned, she tied DSU's single match total for blocks and block assists with 11 in that matchup. Awesome, awesome work from Lauren Gamble and no less uh, a Defensive Player of the Week award yet again. What was incredible about that, before we move on to soccer, is that on, uh, on Friday, we're sitting there statting the game going, man, she doesn't have any blocks into the second set, into the third set. She had one block in the second set, five block assists in the sixth set, or the third set to finish with six blocks for that day and then just goes off again. On, uh, on Saturday, but it's total team effort. I mean, everybody just gritty, resilient victory. And now, like I said, tied for first going into senior day on Friday against Westminster. And, uh, you know, Colorado School Mines don't expect them to, to drop that match. But if, if they did and Dixie State won, you're looking at a, a scenario where you could have an outright conference title. If anything, you're playing for a share of the 2018 RMAC Volleyball regular season title on Friday. Going to be a good weekend coming up. I'm looking forward to it. But let's move on to the soccer pitch now as the women's soccer team hosted MSU Denver last night in the last of four RMAC tournament quarterfinal matches. Carrick, the women's soccer team has been playing extremely well, and they won that matchup yesterday over MSU Denver 2-1. to one. They just played a very an entire game, a complete performance from the women's soccer team. They have been on fire recently. They're, they're currently on an eight-game win streak, um, like we mentioned like, like uh, we mentioned earlier. earlier. Uh, they've just been playing excellent, and we saw it last night against MSU Denver. Absolutely, and that 2-1 that to one victory, uh, and the goals were phenomenal, too. I mean, they, they scored two goals in the first half, and uh, we were able to, to kind of screen capture and share some highlights on social media throughout that game and the first goal was receiving you know multiple hashtag SC top 10 votes on Twitter uh, it was Nicole Mertz with her classic you know flip throw in from the left side of the field all the way into the box and Alexa Ashton rose up above everybody and headed in for you TV and internet viewers you're seeing it right now there's the throw and the flick of the head into the top right corner I mean top shelf that is an outstanding goal and then Tori Page's goal is, is no less fa uh, fantastic as she jukes two or three defenders and then puts it in the back of the net for the two to nothing victory, uh, two to nothing lead at that time. That was in the 36th minute. Uh, MSU Denver did pull one back in the second half and they put on kind of a barrage in that second half. Dixie State was able to weather that storm, withstand the MSU Denver comeback attempt, and they get the two to one victory. We've been saying it. It seems like all, all year long about one team or another. With this RMAC tournament, this conference tournament, it's not about how you start necessarily. It's about how you're playing when it comes down to the finish. 
And this women's soccer team has been good throughout the year. They're great now. And they are on a roll, an opportunity to go in on, uh, and play on Friday, on Friday morning at 11 at number one seed and conference tournament host, Colorado School of Mines, and you know, have an opportunity to, to shock the conference and, and to try to move into the final. And I just got word they've moved up to number six in the NCAA Division II South Central Regional rankings as well. The top six go to the regional. So as of right now, they're in a good spot, but you'd love to see one or two more wins before those final region rankings come out to see if they qualify. But they are on a roll right now, absolutely fantastic and a fun time to watch them play. And like you mentioned, Carrick, it's the best time to be playing your best ball right now is towards the end of the season, especially going into this conference tournament. I misspoke earlier. I think I said eight win wins in a row, just seven wins in a row, but here's an awesome stat about that, Carrick. Over the last seven wins, uh, they've outscored their opponents 23-2. to two. That's right, 23-2, to two, uh, outscoring their opponents over that seven-game win streak. Their last loss came to Colorado School of Mines on October 7th. Going to be a really, really interesting matchup a rematch of that uh, that loss against uh, Colorado School of Mines uh, this next uh, Friday. Really excited for what, the way the women's soccer team is playing right now and the way they're going forward. I would be remiss if I did not mention um, a couple of awards for this women's soccer team because there's been plenty of them this year. Uh, both yesterday, Nicole Mertz winning Defensive Player of the Week and, and just a great award for her, the senior that's put in so much time and effort into this program over the last four years. She actually got a goal uh, in one of the games uh, over the earlier in the week uh, and then she was able to have that fantastic defensive effort uh, this week as well to win that award and how about Whitley Johns uh, not just the freshman of the week because we've seen that a few times the RMAC conference freshman of the year Whitley Johns as she finishes the the season with over uh, double digits in goals I believe at 11 is where she was at for the season and just fantastic for, for the, her and for the soccer pro, the women's soccer program. Yeah, we had on her on, I think, one of the first episodes of the season, Carrick, on this show, and, and she was awesome then, and she's just continued that on throughout the rest of the season. And I think it was last week we saw that she was leading the RMAC or second place in the RMAC in total points or something like that. So a well-deserved award for a, a very good player. 12 goals 12. total. I knew it was somewhere right up there. Let's stay on the soccer pitch as... We are quickly running out of time here in this segment, but we want to mention a couple more sports. Uh, the men's soccer team closed their 2018 uh, season on Saturday on the road at Colorado Christian, and a great opportunity for them as they fell on Thursday, and then they're able to finish the season with a 1-0 victory. We've got more trick-or-treaters. Trick <laughs> this place is just wide open. Wait, well, why don't we just make this an open candy bucket policy? Pass them out, Drayson. Hook them up. Go. And don't... Uh, be generous there. Don't be stingy. <laughs> I got. I'm doing my best, man. You know, I got some practice in the other day. At you did. You did so. get some practice in. So that, that worked out fantastically. Uh, open door policy here at Trailblazer Weekly. Bring the kids down and uh, let's, let's give them some candy. Uh, the men's soccer team with a one to nothing victory uh, over Colorado Christian on the road. Uh, just wanted to say a few things about that. The team has won four of their last five matches to finish the season. You can see it's a young team. They struggled with a few things early. They started to figure some things out down the stretch, and I think they've got a really solid core coming back next year and a great foundation to be brilliant in 2019. And at least if you go into the offseason, you go into the offseason on a bright note, winning four out of your last five matches gives you something to look forward to. It gives you a kind of a good taste in your mouth. I mean, obviously, that's kind of a weird thing to say because you're not playing in the postseason, obviously. But after a tough season, you get to have a little bit of a bright side towards the end of the year, four out of five wins to finish the season. Uh, but Carrick, moving on to the football team, they wrapped up a two-game road trip with a matchup at Colorado Mesa on Saturday, Carrick. Uh, this one was close early, but kind of got out of hand a little bit yeah. uh, late. Uh, a 45-24 loss. It's the first um, time in the season, back-to-back -back losses for the Trailblazer football team. That's the first time that's happened this season. You know, they were they were playing well earlier, early in the game, and then they kind of everything kind of turned on a, on a pick six uh, in the second half, yeah. and that kind of really turned the momentum. And after that, uh, not able to recover for the Trailblazers, a 45-24 loss. Uh, really a game you felt like you kind of had a chance to win, and it would have been a, a bonus had you won it, but uh, 
Uh, obviously, you should have suffered the 45-24 loss. Yeah, there's a lot we could say about that. We would be rehashing some of the stuff from the Shadron State the, the week earlier as well. But they still finished with 441 yards of total offense, but conceded 558 yards of those. Uh, 355 pass yards, we'll say this. 355 pass yards, 86 rush yards. The coaches you know, have said the same thing. They want to see a little bit more balance than that. Mike Sanders is doing everything he can to help this team win, and he has been uh, on the money the last couple of weeks and, and throwing for 355 yards again and a, and a score. Um, just 86 yards rushing, though, got to get a little bit higher. This team, historically, when they run for over uh, 150 yards or more, 29-16 and 16 in the D2 era, 4-0 this season, uh, when they rush for less than 150 yards during the game, 1-4 uh, and four this season, and 13 and 81 all time as a D2 member. So you can see that that you know that 150 yards rushing mark as a team is a big one. And and they just and, and you can say the same thing. It's like captain obvious. You can say the same thing for many football teams. The ground game is so important that if if you don't outrush the opponent, you're not going to give yourself a great chance to win. And uh, big opportunity on a big stage against number six Colorado School of Mines this weekend. So we'll see what they can draw up this weekend yeah and, and playing ranked opponents is kind of all that now for the Trailblazers mm -hmm. this season third ranked opponent and second in the top 10 obviously they played Grand Valley State earlier and then a match against CSU Pueblo earlier in the season Colorado School Mines comes in at number six a good matchup on homecoming and senior day I would really want to see him come out and play very well should mention one last thing before the break um, men's golf currently seventh they're on the, the day three of a three-day tournament in Hawaii currently sit at seventh in the Hawaii Hilo Dennis Rose intercollegiate tournament uh, you can see final results at dixiestateathletics.com a little bit later tonight we've got to take our first break when we come back volleyball senior libero sid brandon will join us on the show there she is for utv and internet viewers to discuss this fantastic season the volleyball team is having and there's much more to come in the volleyball season and on today's episode of trailblazer weekly so stick with us there's a lot more right after this timeout the Trailblazer volleyball team has won six straight matches and nine out of its last ten, playing its way into a tie for first place in the RMAC standings. Here to help us break this year's incredible season down is senior libero Sid Brandon. Sid, thank you so much for, for stopping by on Halloween of all days. <laughs> and I, you probably want to be out and, and with friends or, I don't know, maybe doing homework or something. But no, we appreciate you here. taking some time this <laughs> afternoon. And it, it, we have a lot to talk about. We'll just dive right into it. And don't worry, we'll talk about Halloween a little bit later in the show because that is the theme for today's show. And so we'll, uh, we'll ask some questions about Halloween a little bit later on here. But I want to just dive in. And first of all, just congratulate you on just on the incredible year so far. And I know that this season is far from over. So we don't want to you know, act too much like the season's winding down, but the regular season is. We just want to congratulate you on that incredible year and, and uh, wanted to ask you right off the bat, when were you able to tell that this year's team and that this year was going to be something special? I mean, was it just the first few weeks of practice or when did it all click? Because it seems like right from the get-go, it was full steam ahead. I mean, during two a days, we looked awesome. So that was like... I was like, dang, we have talent out here, but it is always about meshing. Well, and I knew that when we were in preseason and we played Tarleton, which is mm -hmm. they're ranked number one right now, yeah. I think, the, and yeah, we beat them, and I was like, okay, we're meshing well, and this is going to be a great season and a great team. So it's and, been awesome. And that tournament, it, it felt like was just a, a grand way to start the year. You know, played some volleyball in the Burns Arena, and everything went smoothly and went well. and. And you got you know three wins over three quality opponents, and it set the tone for the season. A season in which I'm sure you know already. Uh, with a win on Friday, you set the single season win record for for the regular season. It would be 21 wins. The record is 20 right now. Um, what is it that has helped this team play so well? You mentioned meshing, uh, and so that's probably part of it. But what is it that has helped this team play so well throughout the year? Um, yeah, besides meshing together and. Obviously, they're great girls, great teammates. Um, our assistant coach has really developed these plays that we run. Um, we run red, black, blue. They're called different things. It's kind of hard to explain. And it basically pulls the block from the front row um, to help get one-ups for our hitters. That really helps our offense as well as, obviously, defense. So, hey, Carrick and I were talking a little bit before the show, before you came on, and just kind of talking about kind of the rules of the libero. And I think we kind yeah. of 
haven't figured it out, but maybe for <laughs> those listening that might not know exactly what the libero is or what it means or what kind of the rules, explain what it is to be the libero and what kind of the rules that go along with that. They wear a different color jersey. Right. Right? Yes. That's about, <laughs> that's about all some people know. So, How I always so explain really, it because yeah. everybody knows football, right? So yeah. you have offense and defense, uh -huh. right? I'm defense. I'm like a, what we like to say, it's like I'm like a safety on the football yeah. team. Uh, so I basically dig the balls, I, things like that. Um, the one rule that a lot of people don't know is that I can't take a ball with my hands. I can't set it above the 10 foot line. So I can't assist our hitters with the 10 foot line. But I can use my platform in front of the 10 foot line to assist them. Does that make sense? But can, can you attack, I mean, can you like quick set over the net? Yeah, you I just can. can't help your. Yeah, I can dump say, it. I remember I saw a play, you did that at Pueblo <laughs> yeah. a couple of weeks ago. But uh, so you can quick, you know, quick set, quit attack, but you just can't set up your teammates. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Obviously, you can substitute in anytime you want, right? Or do you have to wait? Because I see you subbing in like almost every play or out of every play. Um, Is there a rule about substitutions like that? No, there's. I'm not technically a sub, oh, okay. so yeah. yeah. Basically, oh. that's what the libero is, is you don't have to use substitution. So I go in for the middles, because usually middles right. can't play defense, so <laughs> I play the back row for the middles. They're the big girls that get the blocks. It's always <laughs> good to have a refresher on yeah. some of the rules no, there that, as well. So. <laughs> I, I, need, I needed that refresher as much as anybody. <laughs> so. so, I mean, what you know, obviously you, you've been you know, here uh, four years, you're a senior now here at Dixie State. Um, what did it make you kind of decide to, to be a libero and kind of just be here at Dixie State. You know, what, what made you want to be a libero here at Dixie State? Well, I actually used to be an outside hitter my whole entire life until oh. I came here my senior year of high school. My coach was like, I want you to be a libero. And I was like, what? Like, never thought about it. I was always the one, like, getting the glory kind of thing. And I never really thought about defense until I looked back and I was like, wow, like, I'm actually pretty good at defense. I was just scrappy. I'd throw my body anywhere for balls. And so, yeah, once I changed my senior year, I um, got recruited to Dixie State, and they were like, come be libero here. So that's kind of how it went down. And obviously that's got to take an incredible amount of trust on your part to trust that, hey, my coach is doing what's best for me. And now you've had a fantastic career here. You can look back and see that, yeah, that was the right decision to make. But was, was that a pretty difficult decision to make at first? Like you mentioned that, you know, kind of giving up the glory for, for just, <laughs> you know, playing some defense. How difficult of, that, of a decision was that to make initially? Um, it was pretty difficult at first. I was like, no, I'm going to be outside hitter. And in club, I still would try to play outside. But um, then I realized I'm only 5'7". So <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to have to go to libero at some point and play some defense. So when once I moved to libero, I was like, I love this. I found the joy in just getting those ups, the thrill of diving and things like that. So it was awesome. Now, I haven't taken, I haven't played a ton of volleyball in my life, but it seems like probably, the, it was probably the last time I played, I took one square, square in the noggin, right in the face. <laughs> and uh, it was then I was like, well, this sport maybe isn't for me. But uh, what's it like? I mean, obviously, you probably get to a point where maybe it's moving in slow motion almost. If you're able to get to some of those balls and dig them out, what's it like when, when you see the other, the other team rise up and next thing you know, the ball's just torpedoing over the net and you've got a split <laughs> second to make a decision? I mean, how do you know? How do you know where to go and, and to read where it's coming off? You know, put us in the mindset of a libero as that ball is coming down and you've got to dig it out. Okay, well, first, a lot of people think it's like, I think before I go. I don't. I'm just like, I read off the hitter. I see how her shoulder is, or obviously squared up to me. So I try to get squared up to her shoulders. I watch her arm, which is a big thing, and I watch her hand. So obviously, if her hand's like this, I'm like, okay, she's going to tip, so I'll take off forward, um, but the big thing that coach always says is stay neutral. You never know what's going to happen, so you want to read and then react. So, yeah, I guess that's the best I can put it. That's, um, that's just amazing because <laughs> when it I, does. <laughs> I watch how quickly that sport moves, and over the last, you know, four seasons now, as I've, I've had the opportunity to help stat the volleyball games, and we're just tracking mm -hmm. everything. It's just incredible how quickly it moves, and I just, since starting my job here at Dixie State four years ago, it's a sport that I have just come to really enjoy watching. It's just incredible to see what you do out there. Um, with each of the student athletes that come in, I like to ask the question, and, and Drayson's like, oh, here he goes, broken record again. <laughs> he asks the same question every time. But, you know, why, why Dixie State? Obviously, you've been here four years now, and, and it's been an incredible experience, I'm sure. I, I've been able to read on your bio, and it says, I chose Dixie State because I love the heat in St. George. It's a beautiful town, and I fell in love with the amazing community and the volleyball team from day one. I'm sure that probably pretty much sums it up. But what, what was it 
when it was time to make that decision and put ink to paper that said, I want to play here at Dixie State and spend the next four years of my life in St. George? <laughs> well, a big thing was the town, obviously. I had always, I only lived four hours away in Salt Lake area, so I was like, I want to be semi close to home that I can drive and still see my family. But also, everyone came here for spring break. It was warm and just, yeah, the community was awesome. I, when I came here, the girls were awesome. Our team is something special. I don't know if other teams feel this, but our team truly is something special. We're like a family, and we have each other's backs on and off the court. I know that any day I could call any one of those girls 10 years down the road, and they'd be like, all right, I'm driving up to Salt Lake to help you with whatever you need. So in that aspect, I just love the team. They really are amazing. So. Why don't you take a kind of a look back on your four years here at Dixie. Uh, you know, you've had a lot of success uh, as a team, in both in the Pac West, this season in the RMAC. Is there a favorite moment you have, maybe a game, a season, a favorite moment that you might have um, that you could share with us? Tell us a little bit about your experience and, and kind of what has been your favorite part about your career here at Dixie State. Hmm. My favorite part, that's pretty tough. Um, obviously, winning the Pac West freshman year was nice and that was fun. <laughs> um, let's see. But this last Regis game, that was really fun. That 3 2. That was fun, and that's when I, we came in the middle and we were like, we got to get this done, and we know we want to take first in this conference, and so that was a really brilliant moment in one of my career um, plays, but what else? I'm trying to think. I don't know. Honestly, I love it all. I love every game. <laughs> I mean, that, that's all good stuff. You mentioned the Regis game. What was it? You probably heard me talking about this in the control room. What was it about that one side of the court on, on, on Regis? <laughs> I mean, is that, did, did, do you notice that that happens in more than just that game? Every once in a while, there's just a side of the net that seems to have the magic? Um, not every game, but I have to tell you, our team is so crazy about stuff like that. They're like, are you wearing your lucky sports bra? Do you have your lucky socks on? Things like that. Hannah Doonan's always like, you never warm up on that side. You need to be on this side to warm up. And like, we always have the certain cheer before mm -hmm. that we always say and things like that. So I don't necessarily know if there was magic, but well, we did pick that side to end it with. Once the momentum's <laughs> flowing, you got to stay on that side, right? Talking with uh, senior libero uh, Sid Brandon here on Trailblazer Weekly, a special Halloween edition of Trailblazer Weekly. I understand you, you guys had a kind of a special Halloween practice this morning. <laughs> um, talk to us a little bit about uh, a little bit about that and kind of what that entailed and give us a little insight on that if you would. Well, I do have to say I've never woken up at 5 a.m. and dressed up before <laughs> until I came to college. <laughs> um, but yeah, we wake up every year and we just, coach always wants us to dress up and we do like a little fashion show for her and she takes pictures of us. So. Speaking of pictures, there it is. Why don't you point out which one for you TV and internet viewers because I looked at this picture and I said I, can, I don't see Sid Brandon. But I, coach told me who, which one you are so I'm going to give us an oppor give you an opportunity to show everybody who you are in this picture. Yeah, I'm actually the giant pug right next to the big baby. So I have a giant pug head on okay. and one of the girls walked me out like an old lady and I did dog tricks. So <laughs> yeah. Was, oh, that's fantastic. But, yeah, we always have fun with it every year. The girls are really creative. All right, so I think we got to do a little bit of our rapid fire. We did yep. this. We got a little, this is a little, bit, a little bit of a teaser for our next segment, yeah. Eric. But uh, got a <laughs> we few were at the questions. trunk or treat the other night. We were at the trunk or treat, and, and we asked all the student athletes a series of questions. And so we'll give you a few of those. Uh, I want to see how you answer them as well. Uh, first thing, what's your favorite part about Halloween? Oh, dressing up for sure. Dressing up for sure. Yeah. What did you just call it? Halloween. Halloween? Halloween. Halloween or Halloween? We had this discussion at practice this morning. <laughs> is it Halloween or Halloween? Because Karen says ha Halloween. I say Halloween. I say Halloween. I say Halloween. Because I think it's Halloween because if you were to spell hallway, you'd spell but, it the same as you'd spell But how Halloween. do you spell the word hollow? Like, not, not hollow with an O, but like a hollowed event. Like, a, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's I, an actual I, word. I don't know that I've ever -A -L -L -O -W. heard that. H-A-L-L-O-W. I don't know if I've ever heard that. I pronounce it Halloween, so... Potato, potato, I guess. <laughs> Wait, this is an ongoing battle yeah. we have here, if you can't tell. So, um, what was your, when you were trick-or-treating as a child, what was your favorite uh, candy you looked forward to getting at houses? Mm, probably Butterfinger. Probably because it wasn't that, like, prevalent. So I was like, can't wait to get a Butterfinger, but it's like, that's really not the greatest candy out there. <laughs> but I just, <laughs> it was bad, rare. Though. It was rare, so I, mean, I that's, wanted that's it. That's probably top five, <laughs> at yeah. least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so would you rather go to a, 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 see a scary movie, or would you rather go through a haunted house? Mm. Probably Haunted House. Haunted yeah. House. Went to one last night <laughs> at the Staley Farms. There you Ooh. go. You did the Haunted Maze? Yeah. Out there? It was scary. I haven't done it for a few years, but yeah, yeah it was. 
It was, it was a little, I got a little nervous last time I did it, but. Uh, I don't know the last time I've been through a haunted house. I can't honestly think of the last time I've been. I think I went through one in like fifth grade at my elementary school, but I think that's the last time I ever went through one. I don't know if there are actually any like haunted houses around here. I mean, there's like haunted mazes and haunted, like when I was growing up, there was, uh, uh, it was literally, I mean, it was this old house that was where the, the you, know, you call it the parking garage because it's like the only parking garage in St. George that went over by the, <laughs> The, the roundabout on Tabernacle. Mm-hmm. It was just right there where that is, and it was just this old spooky house. And but I, they they tore it down obviously when they built that parking garage. But uh, it's been a while since I've been through a haunted house. But happy Halloween to you, Sid. We're excited mm-hmm. that you could stop by and, and join us here on the show. We are running out of time. We did have one more question though that we asked the others, so we might as well just throw it out there. Uh, do you paint a pumpkin or do you carve a pumpkin? Carve. Okay. Yep. That, carve. Was, that was kind of the the general consensus there, spoiler alert, I don't want to spoil the next segment too much, but uh, that was kind of the general consensus. It was kind of like, what, you don't paint a pumpkin, but maybe it's, you know, once you have kids though, it's, you don't want to deal with knives and scary yeah. objects yeah. like that. And it's, speaking of carved pumpkins, I think we need to give a special shout out for the carved pumpkins yes. you see here <laughs> on the set. Yes, James Farnsworth, one of our great engineers and, and camera operators and his family uh, actually carved these pumpkins that you see throughout the set here today with the Trailblazer logo on it, uh, the Dixie State academic logo, and then one of them actually says Trailblazer Weekly. There it is right there. So, I mean, we, we got all sorts of special people helping us out here today, and, and this set, it looks great. Does it? Does it look great? I mean, it, no, it does. Kind of like a spooky <laughs> a spook alley. I here. like it. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us uh, on the show today, and we look forward to, to Friday and, and Senior Day on Friday. We didn't want to bring it up too much, because it's, okay, it's, it's like okay. Senior Day, because there's, here's the thing, you got a Senior Day match, and then you've got our MAC tournament, and you know regional tournament, and, and hopefully keep playing past that. So an opportunity to I gotta go out with a bang your senior year. So thanks for, for stopping by, and uh, you better believe we'll be there on Friday, and, and at the RMAC tournament game next week as well. Awesome, I appreciate it, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Sid. We got to take our next break, but like Drayson was talking about, a little bit of a spoiler alert. When we come back, we uh, will go to the opportunity that we had to spend some time at the Dixie State Trunk or Treat the other night and talk to multiple student athletes, coaches about what they like about Halloween. This is Trailblazer Weekly on this haunted edition of the show. It's <laughs> Halloween, but we're here rocking it here inside the CEC TV studios. We got to take our next time out, and we'll come right back after this. From all of us here at Trailblazer Weekly, Happy Happy Halloween! And welcome back inside this haunted edition of Trailblazer Weekly. Indeed, happy Halloween to all of you. Speaking of Halloween, we are hanging out at the Dixie State Trunk or Treat and Car Show and having a blast. Very excited to be here, Drayson. We're going to talk to some of the student athletes and just have a blast and see what they think about Halloween. It's been a good uh, good event so far, Kerry. We've been here for just a few minutes, got to talk to a few different people. And it's fun, as you can see, we're dressed as referees. It's fun to be in a place and amongst all these athletes that we're probably the most hated people here just based on our costumes. I don't know if I could ever have said that before in my life, but it's good to be out here and we're looking forward to talking to some of the players. Indeed we are. We're going to go talk to them and find out what they enjoy about Halloween. We'll have them throw it back to when they were kids, what they currently like about Halloween. It's going to be a blast. So like the golf video we did a couple of weeks ago, we're going to go out and talk to these student athletes. So Trace and I are going to split up. Hope you enjoy it. Happy Halloween. Dixie State Trunk or Treat Edition. What's your favorite part about Halloween? Uh, well, it would have been when I was younger going trick-or-treating, but now as an adult, to see all the adults in their uh, costumes acting like kids is definitely a good time. My favorite part about Halloween is seeing the creativity everybody has of coming up with costumes and being with the kids. I love seeing their happy faces and getting candy. It's so fun. Uh, my favorite part about Halloween is giving kids out to, or giving candy out to kids. They just look so cute. Uh, probably just get to dress up. Mess around with the guys. What's your favorite part about Halloween? The candy. Absolutely candy. Uh, the candy. It's spooky season, so I love how everyone just gets super festive and dresses up. What was your favorite costume that you dressed in as a kid? Um, me and my best friend were Jasmines. Uh, we both dressed as princesses, and that was my favorite Halloween. It was so fun. <laughs> So what was your favorite costume you wore as a child for Halloween? Uh, as a child, I was really into like horror movies and stuff. 
So I'd be like basic, you know, like Freddy Krueger, Jason, anything like that, you know, Ghostface. Uh, what's your favorite costume that you dressed in as a kid? Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. My favorite costume, I dressed up as Barbie in a box, so I took a cardboard box, put it all over me and saran wrap in front, had the Barbie wig, Barbie pink outfit, so that had to be my favorite. Um, one time when I was like 10 or 11, I dressed up as a motocross person, it was, it was pretty funny. As a kid, ooh, definitely Spider-Man. That was my go-to when I was a kid. Um, it was actually Spider-Man. I dressed up as it probably three or four years in a row when I was a kid. I was a witch with a sparkly pink cape. <laughs> Would you rather go to a scary movie or a haunted house? Scary movie. We actually watched a scary movie as a team, and it was hilarious. hilarious. It was awesome. Would you rather see a scary movie or go to a haunted house? A haunted house. <laughs> scary yeah. movies are too scary. <laughs> That's tough. I'd probably say a haunted house, yeah, and go for the extreme, the ones where they grab you and push you down and all that stuff, for sure, yep. Do you prefer going to a haunted house or seeing a scary movie? Um, I would have to say haunted house. I love going with friends and just kind of getting that scare factor. I'll agree with haunted houses. Definitely haunted house. I would rather go to a haunted house. Ooh, that's a tough one, but I'd have to say a scary movie. I'm definitely a movie person. Would you rather go to a scary movie or a haunted house? A scary movie. Would you rather carve a pumpkin or paint a pumpkin? Carve. This year I painted a pumpkin, but I think I like carving better. Would you rather carve a pumpkin or paint a pumpkin? Definitely carve a pumpkin. Paint for me. Would you rather carve a pumpkin or paint a pumpkin? Carve a pumpkin. So would you rather carve a pumpkin or paint a pumpkin? Carve. Got to keep it traditional. Got to carve it. Would you rather carve a pumpkin or paint a pumpkin? Carve. Carve. Carve, absolutely. Pumpkins are not meant to be painted. What's your favorite Halloween candy that you always look forward to getting and filling your bag with? Uh, probably going to like the rich neighborhood and getting the full-size Reese's. That was the best part for me. What was the favorite candy you got while trick-or-treating as a child? Uh, definitely Reese's. Anything chocolate. You gotta love the big candy bars. Butterfinger. Hands down, Butterfinger. What was the candy that you looked forward to most getting for trick-or-treating? Reese's Cups. <laughs> what yes. was the one candy, or maybe two, that you always looked forward to filling your bag with when you were oh, a kid? plain Hershey's bar. Plain Hershey's like bar? Like the little Hershey's bars. What was your favorite candy, or still is your favorite candy, that you get during Halloween? It's a really close, but probably Reese's. I'm a big fan of peanut butter. That's been a popular <laughs> one so far. Is it Halloween or Halloween? It's definitely Halloween. We got another Halloween! Drayson's not the only one. Is it Halloween or Halloween? Halloween? Halloween. All right. Is it Halloween or Halloween? Halloween. Is it pronounced Halloween or Halloween? I say Halloween. That's just me. Is it Halloween or Halloween? Halloween. Another Halloween. Is it pronounced Halloween or Halloween? I say Halloween. Halloween. All right, there we go. <laughs> Halloween. Halloween, no question. Yeah, not Halloween. I don't even know what that is. Halloween. Is it Halloween or Halloween? Halloween. Is it Halloween or Halloween? Halloween. <laughs> All right, that seems to be the consensus so far. So Halloween it is. Wait. Is that, is that Batman? Yeah, it was Batman. Batman making a cameo appearance here on Trailblazer Weekly. Man, that's, we got all sorts of tricks and treats here on this Halloween edition of the show. Hope you enjoyed listening to our student athletes. We had one coach on there, men's soccer coach uh, Johnny Broadhead, uh, was willing to chat with us as well. I really feel like those types of things help us get to know the student athletes on a little bit different level than just like, hey, how's the season going? How's this? It, you know, really get some talking and what they enjoyed as, as, as a kid and Halloween, what they like about it now. And, uh, and it was fantastic. While we were there, we got to see a number of teams dressed up in their costumes. And over the years, this Trunk or Treat has expanded. And this was huge. We had over 3,000 people at the Trunk or Treat this year. A great car show uh, in line with it as well. And uh, so it's a bigger event than it used to be. But each year, uh, the teams dress up and and people can vote on who they think were the best. Now, just for the record, uh, there was two different awards, and volleyball won one, and softball won the other. 
uh, at, per the vote by the trunk or treaters. However, Drayson and I are going to do our own team costume power rankings. You hear power rankings a lot when you're talking about sports and listen to these shows. So we thought it'd be fun to do some team trunk or treat costume power rankings for you TV and internet viewers. You will get to see those on your screen. If you're listening on the radio, be sure to you know try to pull it up on your phone real quick or watch it later. Uh, and we'll describe them to you for your radio listeners as well. So let's jump into it. I'll start with number five. We did our top five team power rankings. Not every team was there. Men's golf was in Hawaii, and men's basketball was up in Orem, Utah, prepping for their exhibition at Utah Valley. Um, so let's do this, Jason. Uh, top five power rankings. We'll start with five right here and we've combined two of them together because and i don't know if they planned this all together or if it was just by chance we had two separate uh, groups of teams do the same theme and it was the 101 dalmatians theme it was cross country uh who you see right there on your screen now and then as well as soccer uh great choice uh we had so we had two different sets of the Dalmatians, two different sets of Corella DeVille. In fact, uh, one of them was the one of the women's soccer players that we interviewed, Cami Hunter. Uh, she was Corella DeVille, dressed up as, as the, the villain in, in 101 Dalmatians. So, Drayson, that's our number five. I thought that was pretty good, but uh, we saw four others that, that kind of took it to the next level. Yeah, they were all in unison, so that was, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and But uh, number four, I think we talked a little bit about, they were just a little bit better. I think they had Maybe a little bit more of a creative idea, mm -hmm. but they're at number four, um, and that is the, uh, the the women's basketball team. They uh, came as the Toon Squad, uh, obviously from Space Toon Jam. Toon Squad. So, yeah, so they came as uh, dressed as the Toon Squad. Uh, they, they come out at number four. Really interesting, a creative idea. I really liked the idea, but just at number four, um, if we're going to be a little bit critical here, obviously it's kind of a, a fun little segment <laughs> here. They just wore T-shirts, which is nice and fun, but that's why they're at number four. Great idea, but not the greatest execution, if, if you will. That's a great sports analogy there. You know, great idea, great play that was drawn up. It's the execution was, and then, like I said, it wasn't bad execution. We just, you know, I, I was walking across campus today and I saw a person in an actual Toon Squad Bugs Bunny uh, jersey. It was an actual jersey. So uh, there are jerseys out there. So women's basketball coming in at number four in our costume power rankings. Number three, and let me just d disclaimer first. Number three, uh, number three and number two were really, really close and, and hard to decide on. And, and we didn't want to go with any ties, so we split them up here, but this could have gone either way. So we selected in the number three spot, softball. And one of the reasons I did is I could not find a, a whole team picture anywhere. Uh, just a few players that you're going to see there. I know there's probably a couple that exist. They had the Mario Kart theme. Um, you see Mario there. You see a banana peel back there. Uh, is that peach yeah, in Yoshi there. Yoshi and peach. And as well. It's like so I mean, that's, that's a great theme, but I got to see the whole team picture. You know, and I tried to find one, could not find one. So volleyball coming in at number three in our costume power rankings. Only two left. We saw some good costumes. They were all, uh, let me just say, I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings here. We're just having fun with these power rankings. Uh, they had some great themes. Everybody looked great in their costumes. Um, and so, you know, just take these power rankings with a grain of salt. But, but uh, let's move on. Two left. And, uh, and number two, uh, just, just by the hair, just because we, we did have a full picture of the entire team, uh, and that's baseball. They dr dressed up as the superheroes from Marvel, obviously, you see there, you got Batman, you got a few different Jokers, some Supermans, maybe some Iron Mans back there. Uh, you have Tony Stark's obviously there as well. So they had mm -hmm. just, everyone was dressed up. We talked to Tyler Rosas uh, in that little interview mm -hmm. segment. He was dressed up as uh, the as as, uh, as a Joker there as well. So they they were really well done. They had, everyone was, was planned out and prepped and it was very well. Uh, very well executed, and I, I just loved seeing all their costumes. It was really, really fun that they were able to do that. So, I mean, so you had superheroes from all ends of the spectrum. Marvel, all, you know, all those ones. I, I'm no superhero person, but uh, Justice League, DC, I, what, what is it? You know, help me out here. The other one. Marvel There's and Marvel DC and then, and, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, so, I'm not much of a superhero guy as well, so you're just as, you're, you're just that's, as in the know as I am. That's why I'm dressed up as a referee and, <laughs> and not as a uh, superhero novice here. Carrick Segmiller joining you on Trailblazer Weekly. Uh, baseball number two in the power rankings. And then number one, drum roll, please. Can I get a drum roll? Anybody? Okay. Wow. That was there, pretty good. There that was, was pretty good. Right on cue. <laughs> Whoever that was. Volleyball team in the number one spot. They were uh, Day of the Dead, Coco theme, uh, the Disney movie that came out last year. Fantastic movie, uh, by the way. And uh, they went all out, and you see the great team shot of them there. And I just felt like everything was perfectly executed. Uh, the, the matching costumes, the, the makeup, uh, the, the paint, you name it. They nailed this, uh, the Day of the Dead, the Coco theme uh, at the Trunk or Treat the other night, claiming our top spot in the costume power rankings. Yep, so good. I mean, they, they we, we talked about it. They were the hands down number one team. I mean, they, they were just awesome. I thought they were, their, you know, their costumes were great, like you mentioned. And, and obviously, if you base it off a great movie like Coco like that, it's got to be, uh, you know, a hands down no brainer to be in the number one spot. So, so what's your favorite part about Halloween? Uh, my favorite part about Halloween would probably be watching the scary movies. You like saying Halloween, huh? Every time I give you the opportunity. It's, it's Halloween. I don't understand why we're having this argument. It's Halloween. If you were to spell Halloway, H-A-L-L, Halloway, Halloween, Halloween, it's Halloween. Why don't you uh, engine search right now on your computer? I don't know if I'm allowed to say the, the big company that you would uh, on, on the air right now. But, uh, you know, define the word hollow, H-A-L-L-O. It's a word, I promise you. We got to take a break, and Drayson will look that up during the break. But let me tell you, now my favorite part about Halloween, though, thanks for asking, is uh, just that it's kind of the segue into the holiday season. You have Halloween, and then you're into November, it's fall, the autumn season, Thanksgiving's coming, Christmas is coming, the holidays are coming, New Year's. It's just it's a wonderful time of year. Some might say it's even the most wonderful time of the year. And uh, so it just is an op awesome opportunity to move, <laughs> to move into the holiday season. I thought I was going to be able to keep it together, and I couldn't, so we better take a break. It's the Halloween edition of Trailblazer Weekly. We're obviously having a lot of fun here on the show today. Drayson's going to look up what he found out about the word hollow. There's Batman again. Uh, and then when we come back, we've got a weekend preview for you, let you know everything that's going on in Trailblazer Athletics this weekend. Look at our great crew back there dressed up here on this Halloween edition of Trailblazer Weekly. Final time out and then back to wrap up and put a bow on the show on Trailblazer Weekly. Another show is almost in the books and you know what that means. It's time to put a bow on today's show with a look ahead with a weekend preview starting with volleyball. The Trailblazers Hello. host... Hello. Hello. Sorry. I have no idea what you're doing right That's now. That's the word hallow. I think you're just embarrassing yourself on live television. But <laughs> it's the word hallow. I, I still am going to go down to my grave saying it's Halloween. It's pronounced Halloween. I've got it right here. Hallow, hallow is, the, is a verb. It, it means to honor as holy or as a noun. It is a saint or a holy person. What does that have to do with anything with Halloween? Halloween. It's, it's a s sacred and... It's like the Day of the Dead. Do I, I don't let me throw my flag again to give you another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So, illegal use of the Halloween word. <laughs> oh, oh my, my goodness! <laughs> I, I saw that hanging up there earlier, and I was wondering why would they have that off screen so you can't even see it on camera. Obviously, now I know. Wow, <laughs> pretty scary. <laughs> This show has gone off the rails, but it is Halloween. So uh, let's keep rolling. Weekend preview. You were getting us somewhere with, with volleyball before we, I derailed us with we the will, correct pronunciation. We of will the continue word. to go with volleyball, and the Trailblazers will host Westminster this Friday. As we mentioned earlier, it is senior day, the final regular season game of the uh, regular season, like I mentioned. Uh, a chance for them to uh, close out the season with a win, Carrick. And obviously, if the win guarantees at least a share of the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference regular season yeah. championship, uh, obviously if they got some help, uh, they would win it outright. But 
It's finally like last game of the season against Westminster and a good chance for them to close out the season with a win. Oh, no question about that. And it'll be a fantastic setting on senior days. We talked to Sid Brandon, the senior libero, a little bit ago. And you know, sometimes it's a day that, you know, sometimes the players don't like to talk about it too much and uh, because it's, you know, you put in four years of blood, sweat, and tears and all of a sudden it kind of comes to uh, the pinnacle and, and it's over. But uh, fortunately for the volleyball team, they've got much more volleyball to play in the, the, the RMAC tournament and then into the South Central Regionals, which they just moved up from number five to number four uh, earlier today. So they sit at number four right now. And like you said, can clinch a share of the regular season title with the win. And it's funny because we say clinch a share, clinch a share, but it literally is you, clint, you win a conference regular season title. You, you get a trophy, you hang a banner, you are conference champions, you just have to share it with uh, Colorado School Mines, and we'll see what happens with Dixie State's game and then the Ore Diggers game this weekend as well to see who uh, is the champions after this regular season. Speaking of senior day, football senior day on Saturday as well as they come back to Trailblazer Stadium for the 2018 home finale against number six Colorado School of Mines. This Saturday, kickoff at 1 p.m. We will have pregame for you at 12.30 right here on these very outlets here on CEC TV, uh, the Dixie State Athletics Stretch Portal, and on Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. As uh, you know, we'll, it'll be an opportunity to have a great kind of on location pregame show. But about that game, man, the third ranked opponent of the season for Dixie State, and how about the second in the top 10? Tough task ahead, but an opportunity to do something big for the Trailblazers. Uh, you need to win one of these last two to secure a winning season. Uh, so that's football. Before time runs out, we want to talk about women's soccer a little bit too because they have an opportunity uh, as we wrap the show up to continue to make history in the RMAC tournament. You bet you, Garrick, they are going to go on the road now, uh, again, in the RMAC uh, tournament. Uh, they're going to go on the road to the number one seed uh, host school, Colorado School of Mines. That's going to be this Friday. Uh, a good opportunity for them to go and uh,